There are many myths and many truths about dyslexia. Myth, dyslexia is a visual problem. Dyslexic children and adults see and write letters and words backwards. Truth, many children reverse their letters when learning to write. The bottom line is that reversing letters is not a sure sign of dyslexia. A child can be highly dyslexic and not reverse letters. Myth, if you have dyslexia, something is wrong with you. Truth, the discussion should be about what's right about a child with dyslexia. Schools should focus on learning needs of a child. Myth, dyslexia is a disability, and if you are dyslexic, you are not smart. On the contrary, some of the very brightest individuals struggle with learning to read and write. Dyslexia occurs at all levels of intelligence, average, above average, and highly gifted. Many gifted people in the toddler fields are dyslexic. Myth, dyslexia is very rare. Truth, dyslexia is quite common. Researchers say that one in five or 20% of the population has a degree of dyslexia. Myth, people who are dyslexic are unable to read. Truth, most commonly dyslexic children and adults do learn to read. The problem is the effort required to read and whether or not reading remains a lifelong challenge. Myth, you outgrow dyslexia. Truth, you don't outgrow dyslexia. It's a permanent learning profile. Myth, there are no clues to dyslexia before a child enters school. Truth, since reading is based on spoken language, clues to a possibility of dyslexia are present before a child enters school. Children with dyslexia often have slightly delayed speech, don't recognize rhyming words, and there's often a family history of reading difficulties. Myth, there is no dyslexia. Truth, actually 15 to 20 percent of the population has dyslexia. Dyslexia is the most studied specific learning difference. In addition to challenges with language-based learning, students often have struggles with writing or math. Where would this world be without our dyslexic population? Can you imagine life without the gifts of Agatha Christie, Sir Richard Branson, Henry Ford, Walt Disney, Thomas Edison, Winston Churchill, Hal Pruitt, Pablo Picasso, and so many other students who are struggling in school. The Key School is uniquely designed for students who learn and process words differently and the difference in the way they process words lends itself to challenges in learning to read, to write, to spell, oral expression, auditory reception of words, and even math. And the difference in challenges with processing words lends itself to a different way of seeing the world, which we now know their creative gifts and their abilities come from the difference in the way they see the world. Key School teachers are experts at making sure that children understand our teaching style is unique because we make sure that we use a multi-sensory approach in everything that we do. Brain research clearly confirms that multi-sensory works for learning. What is Orton Gillingham? Dr. Samuel Orton. Brilliant neuropsychiatrist. Anna Gillingham. Gifted Educator. They created the Orton-Gillingham Approach. It's multi-sensory. Auditory, hear it. Visual, see it. Kinesthetic, do it. Kids with dyslexia process words differently. Our teachers teach us the way our brains work best. We build our learning step by step. We repeat to remember. We see it, we hear it, we do it. That's multi-sensory. That's how our brains work best. Tapping helps me be a better speller so I can sound out the letters and the words. Morphology, the study of the meanings of the different parts of the word. Rupt, burst break. Muscle memory increases the ability to learn something. Rupt, 
first or break. If we add our own personal twist, it helps okay. us memorize the things we are memorizing better. Stir strap to build, jet to throw. So class, why am I wearing this odiferous necklace? The necklace reminds us of the passage we read last week about garlic. In the in the passage long ago, people were very superstitious. It opens up the file in our brain. We are practicing our keyboarding by typing a five paragraph essay. Keyboarding is auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. Auditory is that I'm saying what I'm typing, and visual is that I'm seeing what I'm typing, and kinesthetic is my fingers are finding the letters of what I'm typing. Tracking helps me when I'm reading aloud. It is a multi-sensory strategy that helps me the most. We begin with single words and we decode them. Then we go into phrases and decode those. It's like building blocks up to what we need to do. By practicing a passage out loud, I'm able to read more fluently and easily. Creating an outline helps me to organize my thoughts, which makes it easier to write the essay or PowerPoint um, faster. Highlighting the main detail and the main idea is helping like a visual drill when I'm reading a summary. I need to break words up in the syllables so I can spell more accurately. When I activate my thinking and doing, I can understand the concept and can apply the skill somewhere else. Doing things more than once, repeating skills and reviewing is how I get information in my head. By practicing the steps of math problems and writing essays, I master them. How does Orton Gillingham help our brains? I use my fingers to track when I read. Orton Gillingham is less confusing because it's broken into pieces. I like to track and swoop because those are the most helpful things to me. Orton Gillingham helps me because I learn in a different way. When I trace, it helps it stick into my brain better. Orton Gillingham helps me learn because we review a lot. What are the good things about the key school? I love the teachers. We get to go swimming for talents. You get to chew gum to help you focus and learn. We get more attention because there's not as much um, people in classes. At the key school, we review and reinforce our learning so we don't forget. I learned how to dot and swim. How is the key school different from other schools? At the key school, I um, learn better because I have lots of brain breaks. The brain breaks help a lot. At the key school, we get smaller classrooms. I use multiplication strategies to help me learn my multiplication facts. We have small class sizes. I think dyslexia is like a teacher who doesn't teach. My brain is like the teacher and it's not helping me to think. My gift because of my dyslexia is acting and singing. Dyslexia helps me because when I sing, I feel the music. My dyslexia makes my mind have an adventure. It learns differently. Dyslexia is a gift because your mind goes on different adventures and you have different ideas, which makes you become very creative. Dyslexia is like trying to dig a hole to the center of the earth. It's hard at first, but once I learn how to use the right tools, it becomes a fascinating adventure. Dyslexia helps me get the problem right because I work more slowly and carefully. Having dyslexia is like having a messy room. My brain makes it harder to read and write. AVK strategies help me clean up my brain. Dyslexia makes my mind work differently and makes me different, but I can still do normal things just in a different way. Dyslexia is like a new video game. At first you don't know how to play it, but after a while you get strategies. Then you start to win the game. Dyslexia helps me picture things in my mind and then build them with a lot of detail. Dyslexia is like an obstacle course. You may wipe out the first time, but you can get up and try again. Dyslexia helps me perform in athletics because I practice every day. Dyslexia is like a path all covered with leaves in my brain. Once I get the tools I need, then I can rake it off. Dyslexia allows me to picture drawing in my head and then draw it. Dyslexia makes my brain like a messy kitchen with no right recipes. But when I came to the key, they cleaned up the kitchen in my brain. Now I can organize my tools and recipes. Dyslexia helps me think about what I'm going to build before I build it. That is why I am a great Lego builder. Well,
The Key School gives bright students with language-based learning differences the educational opportunity to overcome challenges and to achieve their maximum potential in school and in life. I now have confidence in many different subjects at school. I have found confidence in my greatest challenge, math. I have found that I can set any goal and reach it by working at it and never giving up. I used to be shy and lack self-confidence, but now I have come out of my shell and found that I love the performing arts. 